Good morning and welcome along to Obsession Engineering at an unsurprisingly wet Alton Park. Uh, the nice thing is we have actually had two test days here and they've been dry and the forecast actually for the rest of the weekend isn't too bad so I'm hoping this is wet as we see it uh, and being as we're in Superbike we're actually not out until like one o'clock on a Friday afternoon um, and so we actually get to watch another motorbikes go around and first on track today is Sport Bike Cup uh, which is like I don't know, a bit like a super twin class it's like 650-700 cc twins uh, but also with the Triumph Daytona 660 triple in it and you can run a KTM single in it uh, and they're on spec electronics uh, like set specs for suspension and stuff like that and it should be sort of 90-ish horsepower uh, everybody's on the same tyres so it should be quite good fun uh, and so I'm actually going to be watching that with a bit of interest because I like that class and uh, yeah and then we'll go in the garage and actually look at some superbike stuff <laughs> There's quite a few familiar faces in this class. Uh, Aaron Sylvester is currently third, uh, and for us, quite importantly, uh, Finn Smartweeden in 12th, who won the Junior Supersport title last year, and between Obsession Engineering and uh, Paul at Black and White, Paul's crew chiefing for Finn. Uh, yeah, he's just out there getting to grips with these conditions. Uh, told him to stay out there as long as he can, play around with a few buttons on the dashboard on a handlebars and um, and see how he gets on so yeah yeah so you've got a bit of a different setup mechanically for the wet and you've got engine brake changes to try in the mechatronic ecu that's right yeah basically you've summed it up nicely for me so i can't say any more than that yeah. <laughs> anything yeah. else you want to say on my behalf no no we're good <laughs> Uh, right, so session is just finishing, last few bikes going over the uh, line. Uh, the uh, Triumphs are all going quick, but to be fair, they have got three really fast riders on them as well. Uh, so there's an interesting mix. It is interesting that none of the Yamahas have gone out for a, uh, for a wet session. Um, and our boy Finn's down in 14th at the moment, but it is the first time he'll have ridden that bike in the wet, so it is going to take a little bit of time to get into it. Right, you join us now in the comfort of the back of the team truck. Um, and we're in here because it's a little bit quieter than the garage. So obviously on the channel we spend a lot of time talking about the technical features of the bike and what we change and what we try and improve. Um, but we're not just about that as a team. And obviously because we're sponsored with Rapid as well, who are a rider coaching company, and we have Boasty involved and I do some coaching. So we have quite a lot of coaching sort of influence. And so we're now trying to push that even further. Uh, and so we now have an actual real professional um, coaching expert joining the team. Uh, and this is Rob. And because we already have a Rob, this is actually Science Rob. Now, Science Rob has a good background in this sort of stuff. So, Rob, give us a bit of an update on you know, where you've come from, what you've done before. Uh, by good background, it's definitely not in motorcycle racing. Uh, I come from... Uh, a cycling background. I've coached uh, two national teams in Japan and then the USA. I've been lucky enough to go to the Olympics uh, and then alongside that I uh, did my, or I'm not quite finished, uh, doing my PhD uh, which is uh, using data to inform coaching practice uh, which is hopefully something that I'm hoping to lift from my world in cycling into the motorsport world. Now touching on that obviously we have we have data that comes off the bike, and we have like session data, lap split times, lap times, speed traps, that sort of stuff. And I presume we're going to be looking at both of those bits of data, as well as probably actually working out some stuff with Franco's physical side as well. Right, I mean, it's all one interrelated system, right? So we've got everything from Franco's inputs into the bike, his physical ability to do it, his mental ability to keep going after time, um, and then the bike getting tired too with uh, tire wear and fuel and everything like that. So we've got to work out when performance is dropping, what's dropping, is it, is it that mental side, is it that physical side, is it the bike dropping? And it's only when we understand all of that interrelated that we can actually make the right intervention to go faster next time. Yes, and this sounds all very complicated, <laughs> um, but actually the, the, the trick with doing it really well is we break it down into manageable bits. So we're not just looking at like what we can do this weekend to do one fast lap. We're looking at like, in effect, a structure for this year and years in the future for how do we bring younger riders through and make them like faster and stronger and, and better, basically. And that's a lot of the crux of it, isn't it? Yeah, correct. And like during the weekend and 
during the year will keep you updated on like what changes we make to our system to make us faster. <laughs> Update on the bike after Navara. Uh, there's not actually very much changed. Uh, obviously, a little bit of change in uh, preloads and ride heights and little bits to suit Alton Park. Uh, one of the changes is we have a tank cover that we haven't had to paint with an aerosol can. Um, and this one's actually a slightly different shape. So it comes back a tiny bit further at the back and it's actually a little bit wider. Uh, it's giving Frank a sort of, I suppose, a little bit more like grip. Um, it's a bit sort of better positioning for him. Um, and the really technical stuff, um, the steering head bearings in this um, aren't the normal steering head bearings, they're needle rollers and so you have needle rollers actually in the head inserts, in this insert and then you have a, like a, a flat needle roller bearing and then the washers that were on it were only a mill thick so if you torque this up particularly tight it bent the washers and then the steering was no good and so you had to leave the nut quite loose, it was quite a low torque on it so now we've got some thicker washers so we've had to have new headstock pins made um, new head pipes made and that means we can torque the nut up properly and that should give us a little bit more feel in the front of the bike as well and make everything like basically a little bit stiffer uh, and so that's good but it does alter the fork height or it looks like it's altered the fork height but it hasn't altered the geometry in the front of the bike uh, but then I have had to update the chassis software with um, different yoke dimensions to make up for it so minor details but they can make enough of a difference to obviously make them worth doing. The boys are just preparing, they're putting the wheels in, so it's, it must mean it's only a few for FP1. Uh, yeah, we need that last sort of little chat through with Franco. We have a plan for the session, basically the plan is to try and do like two eight or nine lap runs, but we fueled relatively light um, so that he could go a little bit more for a lap time, uh, but still try and get some consecutive laps to work through a few little points we found looking at some data and observing other riders in him. Um, so there's a, a little bit to detail, but it does give us about a 12 minute gap in the middle of the runs um, to be able to work through if we want to try some setting changes or anything like that. So that is a plan. We have a plan for FP1. The other interesting thing is uh, when we were here on Thursday for the test, we had 38 degrees track temperature. Uh, we currently have 15. So it's going to feel different, which is going to be fun. Just throw another variable in there. Uh, bit of an update after FP1, uh, pretty much a disaster if I'm honest. Um, we basically equaled the lap time near enough that we did in testing, uh, but that's not good enough because everybody's going faster. Um, but we've had a bit of a, basically a bit of a bike issue. And we had a little bit of this at the Donington test and then Navarra we didn't have it, but a very, very different nature circuit. And here we're basically on par throttle. The bike's sort of got a bit of almost chatter to it, a bit of patter. Um, and we've tried a lot of stuff with the chassis. Um, but one thing we've had since Donington, since a uh, firmware update for the uh, Motec stuff, is we've had number three cylinder going quite lean compared to the other. So these are landers. Number three goes quite lean. And we knew about, well, we found it. Uh, late at Donington, uh, we got the Motec guys at Navara to look at it, but they couldn't fix the firmware issue for the closed loop fueling to correct it at Navara because they'd had one of the laptops next. Um, but since then, we've had the firmware update and we thought it would fix it, and here it still seems to be a bit of an issue. Um, and so the closed loop is sort of working, but number three is still not very good, and we've tried all the mechanical things. I mean, we put a wiring loop and a fuel pump in because we had to. Um, but we've also had issues with the... Um, we've actually also changed the injectors a bit, so it's like... And the lander probe. It's not those things. So finally, we've actually gone back to some older firmware. Uh, and we're going to test it in FP2 and see if this fixes it, because this could actually be dis uh, upsetting the chassis, because in effect, one cylinder is almost missing at certain throttle openings, but not all throttle openings, which is obviously really awkward uh, and so we're trying to fix the chassis problem 
um, with some software changes. We'll find out if it works in about an hour. Uh, we did actually change some damping settings during the session, but they didn't actually gain us anything. So we've also gone back to the setup that we had in the previous session. And FP2, we're going to start on the tyre that finished FP1, just do a, like a 3 4 lap run to check if we've actually made any improvements with the firmware change. Uh, and if that's fixed it, then obviously we took the new tyre in and we can push on for a bit more of a lap time then as well. Uh, there's something suspicious going on here. Rob's got a pen. Who's drawn a phallus on here? It starts with a D. It's Dave. <laughs> there it was, actually. And ends with a <laughs> well, the, it, the idea of it is putting your name to it, so as you are a cop, <laughs> you have done the right thing. Yeah, I'm very pleased though because I, we were getting a little bit stressed and every now and again you had to think through the list of what's been done and what hasn't been done. And now we have a proper new list and compared to last year it's lovely because it's all printed and formed out, so it's lovely isn't it? Yes. Yeah. First session did not go to plan. Yeah, just like I say, a few little issues, niggly bits. Um, just need to get into a rhythm to be honest. We've been a bit stop-start non-stop really, haven't we? We're going out on an old tyre for the first few laps. If we can come in, get a new tyre on. I'd like to try and get my quick laps in then really so we can sort of relax for the rest of the session. I'm not bothered if the lap time's slower. Um, Q2's sort of out the window at the minute for us really. We're, we're sort of just looking for a bike that works and, and, and get a good feeling with the bike again. So yeah, be over the moon if we've actually got this uh, this electrical issue sorted, um, fingers crossed that we have. Uh, and so this is uh, fitting a front superbike front wheel without taking the calipers off because the fork bottoms can rotate round and we've got a plate that holds the pads spaced apart and then as Dan pushes the wheel in it pushes the plates out, slot the spindle in, nut on the other side, pinch bolts are up, job sorted, get a wheel in in 30 seconds. Uh, but the rear is actually even easier because Slots that in, there is a quick release system in in the back, in the swinging arm, so drops it in there, hooks the chain on, push the spindle through, and if I go around this side, minding Rob's ass crack while we do it, Lovely. do that with a speed brace, give it a decent nip, torque wrench up. It is the middle of FP2, but it's very quiet because uh, uh, there's a Kawasaki out there with its conrods no longer inside its engine uh, and so that's currently being swept up so we're on a red flag uh, slightly stressful uh, first half of the session um, right now basically this morning the um, little like um, spherical bush in the steering damper uh, had fallen apart and was rattling around and we have a big washer so the steering damper can't fall off completely so it still does something but it's not quite right uh, and so we've put a new mount on it with new bearing, um, nipped everything up but we've now got the damper set a bit differently uh, and so it didn't feel right on track so we pulled in, we sorted that. But the good news is uh, that the um, MoTeC, going back to the old firmware, has fixed our fueling issue and now the engine is much smoother to ride on. Uh, so thank you MoTeC for messing around our fueling by putting new firmware on our bike. Anyway, that's bit done um, so we're just waiting basically for a green flag but now uh, we've got a new rear tyre because we went out on the scrub and nobody else has, so we can go out and he can uh, have a bit of a push at it, which is always going to be nice. Uh, right, this is nearly dark outside, uh, which means it's not just after FP2. Uh, FP2 finished about five hours ago, um, but it has been um, stressful and busy. Uh, so basically in FP2 we had an issue that looked like a steering damper issue but realistically was a steering head bearing issue which comes from the new steering stem we fitted uh, dimensionally isn't quite right and uh, basically the bearings didn't work correctly in it um, so that is a distinct issue that we have um, that we have now fixed by putting the old one back together and then when we corrected the fueling we've ended up with a bit of a mishmash of having the new software or the old software on top of newer firmware to like fudge our way around it. So, um, but then me and Jez have had to learn how to migrate all the stuff from this year's, uh, last year's MoTeC into this year's, but top all the bits from map over. And, uh, it's the first time we've done it. It took a while to figure that out. Uh, and we've been going through a lot of the data trying to find um, some other issues. So we still need to sort of get it shifting um, thing that's been plaguing us a little bit um, Rob is 
just inspecting the clutch so he's nearly finished putting that back together uh, we've had the head all out of the bike again we've done all the usual maintenance um, it has been ongoing and if i'm honest quite stressful um, but luckily this bunch of reprobates are quite good at cheering the mood up um, so yeah it has actually been quite good fun and because we've found solutions to most of our problems uh, franco seems a lot more positive about it so uh terrible character building day um we will go back tomorrow there's a lot of grunting going on here boys come on pete hold his pipe for him I'm holding it as come on as rob can. you're gonna have to man up I'm otherwise old, pete's I'm... gonna be here all night silly boy pete, hold it. i'm holding it i'm holding the bike don't let it do anything on, pete, pete, hold it go on yeah. Oh, I love <laughs> <laughs> Right, welcome to Sunday afternoon at Old Park. Uh, it's half past 12 and we don't start between before midday at Alton Park because we can't make noise because of the local church. Um, so thank God for that. Uh, right, bike is basically done from yesterday, but it's got no bodywork on because we've just been to the dyno. And so here's some footage from the dyno. Right, so dyno done and most things are good. Uh, we're making strong horsepower, quick shift was working, but the blipper didn't work all the time. Uh, so we're just checking the data um, to see what's going on with it. Uh, but generally the bike is behaving as it should do, which is a nice and the bonus, even the sun's out. We've had a tough couple of days, um, but we feel we've done everything we can. The rider's ready. He's really ready to put some extra good laps in so um, and it's a sunny day and it's Alton Park we're, we're ready how, how exciting can it be <laughs> hey? heading out there's a big wave head out to begin with and then uh, Andy Irwin and Dino the Honda boys have gone out quite late but on uh, but together so they can tow each other a little bit uh, and this is a bit like going racing myself you get the nerves and the anticipation like the jingling going so it's pretty cool um, but also quite nervous um, but we have done everything we can uh, we've ticked as many boxes as we can we are well we're out there now Right, uh, update from the worst session we've ever had on a motorbike, basically. Uh, qualifying was an utter disaster, without swearing. Um, I'd quite like to swear, if I'm honest. Um, basically, we had loads of chatter, patter, mid-corner. Basically, the bike was vibrating mid-corner um, and was basically trying to push him wide and it obviously didn't have any feel for the grip. Uh, gear shift still wasn't particularly good. We tried some new settings in it for that um, session. Um, and it does very much look like it's um, like an electronics control issue. Um, but the gear shift was just crap, basically. Um, so we've gone back to an old setting on the setting we changed, which was the uh, like tolerance in between the gears setting. Uh, and now what we've done instead, waiting for the bow tanker BMWs to go past, uh, what we've done instead now is we've changed how much force is required on the lever, because basically, when he pressed the gear lever, it was triggering the quick shifter quite early, but way before it got to the pressure where it actually mechanically could change gear. And so there was a bit of a mismatch there. So we've looked on the day and we found that if we trigger the shifter later, uh, it's going to be closer to the pressure it'll need to mechanically actually change gear, which should give a better gear change. Um, but of course, brilliantly, we, of course, we have absolutely no left time left to test this. We're straight into the race. So. Today is not going well at all. Just like yesterday went not very well at all. Um, bit of edge scratching, bit of stress. But we keep plodding through and we put all the pieces together and eventually we will get somewhere. And hopefully the place we get to was better than the place we're currently in. And because we're into the race next, we're, we're doing race prep. So 
Uh, we'll be rolling to the grid on the tyre that finished qualifying, uh, but on a new front, and then we'll change the race tyre on the grid. Uh, right, pitch trolley, we have generator. Uh, obviously, we'll have the spare wheel on here. Uh, tyre warmers and bits in the trolley. And then we have tools we may need on the grid if something goes slightly awry, and I'm about to put my suspension tools there, and then we'll be sort of organised. And along with gear change settings, we have made substantial changes to the setup of the bike. Um, so, I believe the standard, the geometry we running wasn't too bad, uh, but this patter, chatter, vibration issue was definitely there. So, uh, we've dropped the Olins in because the uh, like valving rates are different in it. So, that we haven't had a patter issue with that. So, we're putting that back into test what difference that makes. We have different spring though, different preload obviously different damping settings, different ride height, so the bike will turn differently. Uh, different fork springs in the front, because when we lifted the rear of the bike up, we need the front stiffer so it doesn't pinch as much on the brakes. Uh, yeah, and a little bit more compression damping to stop it pinching as well. So, quite a big change in the bike. Um, change the electronics, um, because, well, we're pretty much at the back. We have almost nothing to lose. All right. Five minutes to go before pit lane opens. Today we will definitely be doing uh, two out laps. So in effect, you can roll out of pit lane, do a lap, pull back into pit lane, um, ride through pit lane and do another out lap formation lap to the grid because there's long enough on the timer when pit lane opens. Uh, and then obviously when we get to the grid, we'll be warmers back on, wheel change and all the regular stuff. Um, right. In the last few minutes, I've had a chance to take the other shock apart and took the spring off it and found we've got a damping problem with it. So either an internal seal or something has failed in that. Uh, and so putting the Olins in will basically definitely fix uh, most of the problem we've been having. Uh, and so the fact that Franco could do like an, a competitive lap time, the same as he's been doing all week, but on a component that was failing, uh, shows what pace he can have. So that's a positive for the race. It just unfortunately means we're going into the race on an untested setup. But we know he goes well in the race, so we're going to dig in. On the grid, yeah. uh, basically back row because we've had a bit of a mare. Yeah. Uh, it's not been ideal, this has it? It's not been ideal, no. This is, it's not fun walking this far back on the grid, to be honest. We know we don't want to be here. There's a reason why we're here. We're going to work hard to put it right. We can only do what we can do for now. This weekend's a bit of a testing weekend now. Um, but we know there's reasons why we're here. It's not necessary Franco, it's not necessary anything the team's doing wrong. We've had a lot of component issues, a lot of electronic issues, and we're still learning as a team. I know this isn't where we're gonna be for the rest of the year, so let's take it on the chin, work hard, and uh, move forward. Right, uh, just over halfway through the race and he got right into it, he'd knocked 0.9 of a second off his quality lap um, and he was right in a scrap with uh, Edger, Dean Harrison and uh, Rollo and he was right with him. Lee Bob Jackson had had a technical issue I think and pulled back and then got back in front of him and I think Frank was just beginning to get the toe uh, and he uh, crashed at Ireland, uh, which is fast uh, and it says rider being assessed it looked like he was maybe holding his wrist. Um, so, uh, fast one that mate. That was awful, yeah. Really fast high side. What do you reckon you're doing through there? About 45 mile an hour, isn't it? Plus 100. Add 100 on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 120 mile an hour high side. Pretty scary one. Yeah. With a sore neck now. Turn. But. Turn yeah. But the good thing is we've got the pace. Lap times were there again. I felt comfortable. Arm pump felt better. <clears throat> Riding with good lads was actually pulling Andy in towards the end obviously I've crashed so it's, it, it all means nothing but I'm not bothered to be honest I'm not really that bothered I'm just happy that I know I can ride a motorbike again yeah. and you can set up a motorbike again yeah HJC helmet and your Revit leathers have done the job though haven't they, they? Have, yeah uh, to be honest I need to get another another airbag in this I've crashed that many times already I've gone through my airbags I only got it done the other week <laughs> Um, yeah, like I say, Helmut's done a really good job. It's, it's absolutely fine, thanks to Stafford and the guys up there. And Ian from Revit, so yeah, all good. Thanks, everyone. 
I'll, t- I'll tell you what, Pete, we're not looking too bad, are we? Um, no. We'll have a little bit of an assessment. There was a big clot of mud down in the swinging arm, but it's not done any real damage in there. Uh, not done the foot peg. Um, I don't think it's even really done an engine cover. It's just picked the mud out of it, put yeah. handlebar on it and some fairing, and it, it's actually not bad, that, Pete, for oh, like 150 mile an hour eyesight or whatever it is. Oof, she's she's coat well, boy. She's coat well. <laughs> even your bracket stood it, Dave. There you are. Look, 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 how about that? That's good the way. That, yeah, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, yeah. Now she'll come right. That will. That will. Riders all right. Bikes re- repairable. So jobs, jobs all right. Will be and good. The, and the lap time's decent. Lap time's even. Got two races tomorrow, so we'll have it. We'll have it. All right. While uh, Rob and Dan do some rebuilding, we've been to Hell who are making some brake lines for us a bit different, and uh, Sport Bike Cup is on the telly. I'd just been on the grid for the first time, and I was shaking. I was like, oh, it's exciting. It's like going motorbike racing, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, wor- it's, it's even worse than being a rider. It really is. If we can try and get into the points this first race and, and get some a couple of little points in there, you know, on the table, we'll be happy. We'll be really happy. So far, so good. Just cross your fingers. Rob and Dan are still busying themselves with uh, details, um, but we do now have the fuel tank back on it. Uh, we've checked all the fluid levels and so I've checked in the air box that that's full, uh, free from any debris. Uh, and the next thing we're going to do is actually just give it a start up because on the data logging, it turned off pretty quick as it was sort of disappearing into the grass um, and the oil pressure was good until the engine had stopped. So. I'm not concerned about this motor having run anything up, but I do need to check everything actually works. Right. Bit of smoke off it, but we've had everything wet and uh, wiped off and stuff, so yeah. We have a running motorbike, the motor sounds sweet, and because Rob's holding uh, the extra baffle over the end, it's nice and quiet so we can actually hear the motor. I'm calling that job sorted. And we're smoking. Well, steaming anyway. It isn't just uh, crash damage, of course, that we're fixing. We're actually looking through data and uh, debrief stuff. So, uh, of course, that session's the first one where we've not got a massive list of problems with the bike. We've only got a, a few small items. Uh, and so we're going to put a click more steering damper on it. Um, and there's a couple of places on here. The front tyre feel is a bit strange around Cascades. Uh, but when we look on the data, there's quite a lot of sort of un- it looks like undulation on the track because the rear follows the front um, and I'm a bit critical I don't want to change too much setup to fix that to mess it up everywhere else where it's really basically working now uh, we could do with a little bit more turning in a couple of places and especially out the first chicane the drive out of here of course is critical to get you over the top to then break for the second chicane to overtake people um, and at the moment we're not turning well on throttle um, and so what we could really do with is sorting that out um, and so we've been hunting through the data like this is the exit of the first chicane so we go down here so as he comes off his lean angle and he's already on throttle basically like at full lean angle he starts cracking the throttle open starts building the throttle into it which is the blue line and then just as he's on the direction change, he has to flick the back brake on it. Um, he has to put some back brake in, about 25 bar, to calm it down a little bit to kill the wheelie off. Um, and then, at that point, it like digs the back of the bike in, and the shot goes quite deep. And then it doesn't want to steer as he's trying to finish this sort of direction change off. Uh, and so we're just going to put a bit of preload in the rear uh, because it's the first time we use that shock we sort of guessed the preload setting um, and we guessed it to go over the bumps a bit and we're probably a little bit soft so we're going to put some preload into it to try and stop it going as deep into the shock so it sort of holds its shape and its geometry so it will actually turn on throttle a bit more. Um, so we're going to do that but that might lose a little bit of brake stability because we'll have less sag and we've got a bit of a brake stability thing at turn one mostly because of the shape of the track and so for that uh, I'm dropping the forks through a tiny bit, a couple of mil because that basically lowers the centre of gravity, uh, lowers the pitch of the bike, so it doesn't pitch as much when we hit the brakes. So that should help that a little bit. Um, and this is all, you know, we've got ideas. Generally, we work in the right direction, hopefully. Uh, and we have got a 10-minute warning warm-up tomorrow, so this is the time to try it. And for the next bit, we're going to go absolutely full geek. Um, the gear shift isn't brilliant. And especially here because the gear shift settings are basically designed for when you're going absolutely flat out, wide open throttle. 
and it's designed to give you the shortest gear change possible. But here, there's a lot of times when you're part throttle um, and not full load because of the nature of the track and the way you need to short shift in places to get the thing to stop wheeling. Um, and so the gear change isn't particularly pleasant at the moment. So if we scroll into here, uh, this yellow line is the force he's putting into the gear lever. So we've got that set, so it actually starts to shift there. Uh, we set the force loading up on it. So that's when it starts the gear shift. So then, at that point, it starts cutting the ignition. Um, so it doesn't do a full cut, it does a partial cut of the fuel and ignition. Um, and then you've got this line here, which is the actual like um, gear drum moving. So the actual mechanical of the engine swap rate, like moving the gear drum so it shifts. So it starts to cut there, but if we zoom right in, at this point here, it starts to bring the ignition back in, but it's actually only halfway through the gear shift mechanically. Um, but it's bringing the ignition back in, and which is going to start loading the gears back up. Uh, and that's not what we want. And at the moment, if we trace it back from there to there, it's about 50 milliseconds. So uh, half of a tenth of a second, which isn't very long. Uh, and then if we go into the actual uh, gear parameter stuff within MoTeC, uh, there is a gear estimate delay, and that's how long it thinks it should take to change gear, and that was at 50 milliseconds. The coincidences are a little too common. So what we've done is we've moved that out to 60 milliseconds. So 10 milliseconds longer on the estimate, we think should give us a better kill, um, and so it should shift a little bit better. And yes, 10 milliseconds might make all the difference on the gear shift. Again, something to try in warm-up. The sun may be setting over there, but there is still a bit to do. Um, right, the fuel tank is now a bit awkward to fit because the subframe is ever so slightly tweaked down on this side. But the fuel tank is basically taken a bit of a whack on this side and it's just pushed it down a little bit and so it's just tweaked all the mounting points a little bit. So there's a bit of sort of tension while you pull uh, the mounting bolts in, but they are all rubber mounted, so they do go. Hello, that's, uh, that, that, that's Dave from uh, Off Track Podcast. Um, right, other bits we've changed. Uh, new spider clip-on tubes on both sides. So the one on this side was very bent. Uh, the one on the other side wasn't, but it's taking a bit of a whack on the lever guard and stuff, uh, and so we've changed it because it's not expensive and we don't want to risk a handlebar breaking. Um, clutch lever, we have got another one on the way, but that one's all, that one will do. Uh, we've had to pick some mud out of the buttons. Uh, right, new GB Racing engine cover. Uh, they are the toughest and bestest ones, so they are the thing to have. Uh, we've again not even done a footrest because the spider footrest and bits are absolutely solid. Ah, we're getting there, aren't we, Rob? We are, Dave, yeah. <coughs> Another long day, but we love it. Weirdly, it's more positive even after we've crashed a motorbike than it was this morning when it was going yeah, wrong. It he seems to come in and it's always no. Yeah. It's no, 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 no. And then when it's yes, he throws it at the scenery. <laughs> <laughs> but at least he throws it at the scenery going fast and that's what exactly. we wanted. Uh, right, I've bought Dan a present. And by a present, I mean more work. Uh, there's, we finally got our hell brake lines. So they're actually the right ones that will fit correctly uh, with our yokes and bits like that. Uh, and so they've just got to be bled up in a few minutes. Uh, Danny's just giving the calipers a clean. Uh, we've obviously done fluid levels and all that sort of stuff. Uh, fuel level is set for the morning. We are, you know, in the midst of it still, but we're cracking through. Well, these boys are, I'm just talking. Right, and at 20 past 10 in the evening, uh, that is ready to go back to scrutiny, barring literally putting the fairing on in the morning. But the boys have done a mega job. Uh, Rob and Dan and uh, Pete have just pitched in, got everything sorted on that. So, tip top, excellent job, lads. Um, yeah, so we'll be pushing it to scrutiny in the morning. And then it's morning warm up at 25 past nine. So, best go and get some beauty sleep, because I think I need it. Uh, welcome back to Alton Park, it's Monday morning and the boys are just pushing the bike up to scrutineering, everything is done, uh, we've put a setting change in for warm-up, uh, everybody's had the breakfast I think, we're sort of ready to go. I'll say sort of ready to go, uh, Franco is not exactly feeling brand new this morning but then when you've been high-sided at over 100 mile an hour um, you're not going to feel great. Uh, right, they do have um, quite specific concussion protocols at BSB 
and so the super bike riders have to basically do a cognitive test uh, at the start of the season and then if they've had a bit of a knock uh, they redo the test and they have to score obviously within a few percent or whatever the test to be allowed to go and ride the motorbikes. Uh, Franco passed the test yesterday afternoon um, and he hasn't particularly hit his head I think he's literally just clipped the grass a little bit with his helmet but he has landed fairly hard uh, and so his shoulders aching and if you've had a big impact on your back of course uh, everything swells up and the brain's to and from your brain the signals to and from your brain even don't necessarily get through which might be something I've maybe had um, yeah so he's going to go and get a little bit of physio get checked out again this morning as long as he's feeling okay he's going to go and try uh, morning warm-up uh, but there's no pressure from us if he doesn't feel right we're not going to make him go out because as much as motorbike racing gets kind of important uh, it's not important enough to try and knock yourself out for uh, and so that is the crux of it but hopefully he'll feel all right and uh, we'll have a bit of a go right well we started on it rob fairly calm this morning yes it's, it's just to see how he is really into this morning because he's a bit sore after that yesterday we've got the bike ready but it's down to him now isn't it? it's if he's not right, he's not right. It's, you know, these are super bikes, aren't they? They're not little uh, one, two, fives that uh, you can overcome these things, but we'll see how it goes. A couple of laps in morning warm up, um, but he's, um, his shoulders playing him up and he's not got good feeling in his arm and lost a bit of strength in his arm. So um, he can't ride to the level you need to ride out to race super bikes. And if he tries, he's just gonna basically crash again trying. Uh, and there's no point in that. So. Um, we're knocking it on the head for the day, uh, which is obviously disappointing. He's disappointed he didn't get to, to go and race, um, but his health is more important than us sending him out trying to force him to go round and round in circles. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Early bath today. Right, not on the grid for Superbike today, but we are still on the grid because I've come down to give uh, the definitive racing team a, uh, a, well, a bit of support basically. I mean, they, I'm sure they don't need me here, but I kind of like getting my little grid fixed. So uh, the bikes are just about to be released from pit lane. Uh, just hold them a minute uh, and then they'll be running around here. And uh, because this is a sport class, we don't have um, trolleys and generators and stuff. It is literally panic stands and just wrap the warmers on to stop the breeze getting on them. And it'll be like three minutes on the grid and off we go. But just like to come down and absorb some of the energy. Um, you getting a little grid fix as well? I am, yes. Working. Got Amy keeps them out on these rides. Don't come cheap. Well, quite right, yeah. I don't know how much I'm in, and I probably not. And maybe a chicken. I got a, <laughs> yeah, got a, probably. I got a bit of chicken last night, so that'll that's do, about yeah. that's about all. Is I'm that getting. code or was that actual chicken? No, that was actual chicken. Oh right, okay, yeah, good. good. High protein. protein. Yeah, high protein. They're going to need it for today. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Well, second on the grid for the Superstock race then. It is, yeah. Second on the grid. First time I've been on the front row since 2018, so Looking been a winner. To it? Nope. Well, I am, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Usual racing nerves. Yeah, definitely. Go on, good luck. See you then. Uh, right, I'll just check with Finn that he's not bothered by a camera, but you're not shy, are you? Nah, no, nah, not me. No. Uh, I noticed you, you've, got, you've gone for the full glamour pit girl, grid girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. It's a it's good bit of family atmosphere as well. Yeah, definitely. It's good to, have, good to have everyone here with us on the grid, yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to the race? Yeah, we had a good one yesterday, obviously, so uh, hopefully I get away with the front group and then, yeah, that'll be a good race. Yeah, that's cool. Right, good luck. Thank you. That was a hell of a race. That was a oh yeah. What happened then? Um, we got a seventh. Lots happened, we got a seventh. He's done another PB. He's in the 44s. We were we were going to walk away from here happy with the 45. And he's got 44. That's stunning. And he stayed on it. He kept the guy hounding him all race long. Kept him behind him. Awesome. I'm so impressed. And I can't breathe. <laughs> Motorbike races are high sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want to be out there actually. I really wouldn't want to be out there at all. But it's quite bad here as well. <laughs> wow. And that is a wrap from Alton Park. Uh, obviously not the way we wanted to finish the weekend, but the important thing is the rider is in one piece. We did show some good race pace, so we know we've got some way to build from. It's been another weekend of. I'm going to call it miniature disasters. Uh, lots of little things that, frankly, we should have actually got sorted earlier than we did. So we are learning. We're learning in at the deep end, but we will get there. We will start getting some results. Uh, and yeah, the hard work will continue. So thank you for watching and join us again next time for some more motorbike fun. <laughs>